Magandang araw po. Ako po si William de Pasupil at ito ang Reforma. Dito sa ating programa, tututukan natin ang mga institusyon at ahensya sa tatlong sangay ng gobyerno. Maayos ba ang pagpapatakbo ng mga ito o kailangan bang maguhin para mapaganda ang serbisyo ng mga ito sa mga Pilipino? Sa aming episode ngayong linggo, tatalakay natin ang matinding traffic dito sa Metro Manila. Matagal na itong problema at hanggang ngayon, wala pang solusyon. Araw-araw, umaabot ng ilang oras ang pagbibiyahe ng ating mga kababayan patungong trabaho at pauwi sa kanilang tahanan. Silipin natin ang mga sanhihin ng traffic at pag-uusapan ang mga posibleng paraan para malutas ito. Kasama po natin si Ginoong Filino John Palapox, isa sa mga tanyag na architect at urban planner sa bansa. Magandang araw, Ginoong Palapox. Uh, magandang araw po. Yes, sir. Kamusta kayo, sir? Yeah, just fine except that I just brought my wife to Makati Med for a double hip replacement. Yeah. Ano ba ang dahilan kung bakit nagkakaganito ang traffic sa Metro Manila? Ano ang sanhi nito? Very interesting traffic po. Kasi I think since I was 24 years old, mga, mga 1974, marami na tayong binibigay na rekomendasyon. And noong 1975, 76, and first quarter of 77, naging ano po ako, senior planner and team leader for the well Bank funded uh, Metro Manila Transportation Land Use and Development Planning Project. At maalala ko, sabi ng team namin that time, Metro, Pal Metro Plan team, with a do-nothing do scenario, we will have catastrophic traffic, catastrophic flooding, not prepared for disasters, catastrophic water supply problem, solid waste management problem, and many other uh, urban pro pro problems. Like even then, na, na ano namin, yung, yung fault line and uh, areas that are liable to flooding and disasters, at ano yung mga solusyon. So yung sinabi namin na in the uh, When was that? 49 years ago, yung catastrophic traffic na with a do-nothing scenario nangyayari na po ngayon. Mali yung mga model natin ng urban planning, city planning. Yung ibang, ibang syudad o bayan, paligid natin like Singapore and Hong Kong, ang model nila more of European cities. Kaya walkable, bikeable, uh, public transport. Naging model natin, parang California cities, eh, ang dami na ng lupa, car-oriented, not pedestrian-oriented, not public transit-oriented. Pangalawa, yung planning, urban planning, is balance. There's a balance between place of work and place of residence. And nangyari, like sa Makati, dito saan kami nakatira at uh, nagtatrabaho, Makati Central Business District, the daytime population is 11 times the nighttime population. So, yung mga empleyado ng Makati at saka bumibitis sa Makati, that's the 11 times population in the morning, 11 times nighttime population getting out in the afternoon. Kasi, yung housing stock ng Makati, na-price out yung mga empleyado ng Makati. And, 1990, yung LGU ng Makati, pinayagan mag four times ang density ng Makati CB, Central Business District. Hindi naman tumaas ng four times yung access capacity, parking capacity, at lumiit pa yung mga open spaces. Kaya noon, in the mid-70s, Metro Plan Manila was one of the models of metropolitan planning. Kaya nga po ako nakilala ng mga rulers ng Dubai, nabasa nila yung report, Inimbita ako para tulungan i-plano ang desert town of Dubai and make it into a global city. Sir, noong 1970, nung kinonsulta kayo, ano ang proposal na binigay mo sa ating gobyerno? Marami po. It was a team po. Team leader lang po ako. One of them is, uh, so 1976-77, we should have completed eight light LRT lines, light rail transit lines by 1992, over 15 years. In 1984, 
LRT1 was one of the best LRTs in Asia. Okay. Kaya lang hindi na nasundan kaagad. Ito yung mass transportation, sir. Ano? Oo. Hindi pa nakukompleto yung eight lines. In 1945, bago pa ako pinanganak, the American Corps of Engineers, they proposed 10 radial roads and 6 circumferential roads sa Metro Manila. Sabi ko nga, the road network, the transportation network is as strong as the weakest link. Yung radial road number 4, ito yung Pasig River alignment, is west transportation corridor, hindi pa nagagawa. So it's not just the weakest link, it's the missing, missing link. Yung circumferential road number four, I think it was just done in the previous administration ng Hong Duterte. Uh, circumferential road number five was, I think, under Ramos nagawa yun. And dapat natapos lahat yan, like circumferential road number four, highway 54, 54 meters wide, is EDSA. Nagawa yan 1954. So dapat siguro after 10 years nagawa yung circumferential road number five, then after 10 years, uh, number six. Mabagal po tayo implementation ng mga plano magaganda. And yung mga na ilikomenda ko nga at pati ng team namin ng Metro Plan Manila 1975-76 nagamit ko sa 39 other countries na tulungan ko especially Dubai. Sir, bukod sa ano, road network natin no? and somehow na-address natin yung road network eh. Pero ang sabi nila uh, mas marami ang sasakyan at uh, dumarami ang tao sa Metro Manila kung kaya't hindi pa rin kakayanin ng ating road network. There are 32 modes of transportation po. Nagpapasalamat nga ako sa, kasi na-hire ako ng Asian Development Bank para tumulong sa preparation of the Philippine Development Plan 2023 to 2028. Na-share ko doon, there are 32 modes of transportation. And number one is active transport, is walking, biking. And also, it's not just road transport, railways, uh, even, even, um, even uh, uh, what they call this, aerial cable cars, water transport, and so on. More than 32 modes of transportation. Masyado tayong car-centric. Kasi siguro after the war, sa reconstruction natin, yung mga nagbigay ng funding sa atin, mga countries that make cars. Kaya... We even had one of the longest railways in Asia before the war. Yung nasira ng gera, hindi na rebuild. And also, I think most of the architects, urban planners, engineers, after the war, ang orientation nila, car-oriented, car-centric, car, car sa automobile lang. And if I research nila, I think Philippine, only 2% of Filipinos own cars. Kaya lang, even sa road network natin, ang road density masyadong mababa. Compare mo even sa European cities. And then European cities, na they have more roads. They saw good railways, good pedestrian network, bicycle highways, and so on. And then, like I think nabasa ko, January lang, ang sales of cars, 42% growth rate from previous year. 42%. Lumaki ba mga kalya natin ng 42%? Why is cars cars are no longer the the uh, privilege of the minor, uh, minority, but it's now the expectation of the majority because of a very lousy public transit system. It's lousy, not convenient, it's not safe, it's not clean, doesn't arrive on time. Kaya wala talagang option to the car for a convenient uh, mobility. And nung araw, Ibang mga planners o mga real estate practitioners, location, location, location. Not anymore. It's ano na. Mobility, mobility, mobility. Accessibility, accessibility, accessibility. So sir, paano natin ma-improve ang ating public transport? Kailangan ba nating dagdagan ang ating road infrastructure? Palawakin ang mga ito? Masusolusyonan ba nito ang ating mga problema sa traffic. Infrastructure, water transport, railway systems, maybe even aerial cable cars, and so on. Multi-approach multi pala, sir. Ano? Oh, marami yung, yung sabi ko nga, there are more than 32 modes of transportation. Hindi lang kotse, hindi lang bus, hindi lang jeepney, hindi lang taxi. But we start with walking. Walking and biking. 
Uh, and... So sa sitwasyon nyo yun, sir, ano ang nakikita mong immediate solution? Mas madali, ma ma makakadong so, sa ano, ano talaga, uh, sa transportation planning and ano, traffic uh, uh, management plan uh, and traffic engineering, kung magkakasya, laparan yung mga sidewalks sa bicycle lanes. Mm -hmm. Then number two, more encourage mo the use of public transit by making them more more convenient, clear, cleaner, and time. Like nasa Dubai, ako rin ang team leader ng public transport planning in Dubai, traffic management, and so on, aside from doing urban planning, land use planning, and architecture. And nasunod sa Dubai mga recommendation namin, like congestion charging. Every time papasok ka from Dubai, from Sharjah to Dubai, Abu Dhabi to Dubai, you pay, I think, about 45 pesos. Na-propose namin yan, congestion charging, 1975 pa. Na in congested streets, you pay during peak hours. Hindi, ka man, hindi naman checkpoint na yun. Eh. May gantry sign, nasa taas lang. Na, nababasa yung dapat mayroong may RFID lahat ng sasakyan. And then, maski during peak hours lang on weekdays para unnecessary trips, you discourage it during peak hours. And maraming ano yan, maybe wala nang masyadong studies. Let's say yung mga toll, uh, mga toll plazas, pag papasok ka ng Metro Manila, may bayan. Paglabas mo, libre na lang. Sir, doon sa ating light railway transport system, kailan ba natin dagdagan pa ito? At uh, hanggang saan ba natin dapat paabutin ito? Oo, 1975 proposal natin, eight lines should have been completed by 1992 in 15 years. And like sa EDSA, kailangan pa more more rolling stock yung bagon yung train mismo kaya ng railway above EDSA yung 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 railway trucks in fact parang nga over design yan eh pero kulang ang sasakyan alam niyo sa Dubai yung pinaka light rail transit nila yung metro yung there is a they call it gold card yung seating capacity you pay more and then there is a section for uh, women and children. Then there's a section for everybody else, standing room. Eh kung gawin yan, dito, di mga nakakots yung nagdadaan ng EDSA, sasakay na lang dun sa parang first class na section ng rain, train, was women and children, nakahiwalay din, then everybody else. Kasi with that, yung mga nakakots yan, di sasakay ng MRT, di sasakay ng LRT, kasi it's not clean, it's not it's not convenient. Maybe it's not even safe. So, kung kailangan talaga natin, sir, effective na mass transport system, ano? pag nagdagan natin itong LRT, sa tingin ninyo, mapapaluwag nito ang ating... Oh, mak makakatulong po. And then, yung subway, pre-nopose yan, 1971 pa. Hindi pa ako graduate. Pre-nopose ng mga Japanese consultants. I think 1970, basta, ano ko, between 1975 and 1974. There about. E ngayon palang gagawin. Yung sabi ko nga na American Corps of Engineers, yung 10 circumfer uh, 6 circumferential roads and 10 radial roads, hindi pa nakukompleto. And pre-post ko rin 1989 pa, yung maging 10 circumferential roads na. Para yung number 10, yun na yung connection between Bataan and Cavite. na ko yan 1989 pa. Ngayon palang gagawin. Both a bridge connection and a subway. Para kung galing kang Central Luzon, you go to Calabarzon or vice versa, hindi ka na makikigulo sa traffic na Metro Manila. Sir, sa tingin niyo, sir, nakakatulong ba itong mga ginagawa ng mga local government units na uh, magkaroon ng uh, number coding limbawa, magkaroon ng rerouting? Ito ba yung makakatulong sa ating uh, malubang traffic sa Metro yeah. Manila? I, I, I think parang aspirin lang po yan, eh. hindi po solusyon. At it should be comprehensive. Metro-wide metro ang gagawin. Pati na rin, uniform ng traffic aids, magkakaiba pang kulay. Oo. Ah, Ito yung small non contact comprehension, sir. Anong, anong basa nyo ron? May magagawa alin, ba ito? Alin po? Yung non contact comprehension na pina-implement din ngayon na ilang LGU. Nine, non, -contract, non contact comprehension. 1977 pa naka-implement na sa Dubai yan. May mga cameras and radars. Nahuli so, kailangan natin ito, sir. 
Oo, oh, kailangan po yan. Oo. Oh. So, maraming progressive cities in the world, ginagawa na po yan. Naka-record, like hindi ka makapag-renew ng license mo, you cannot get out of the country until you you pay the penalties. Nabanggit nyo kanina, sir, ang epekto ng traffic sa mga commuters, sa ating mga manggagawa, ang man hour, ang nasasayang na oras, at uh, mga gasolina. Sabi mo, maabot to ng 1 trillion a year. Mari bang ipaliwanag nyo ito sa amin? Yeah, sir? kasi study ng JICA po yan. I think some years ago, 4 billion pesos a day times number of days in a year. Tapos yung man hours lost. Let's say mga nagtatabaw sa Makati Central Business District sa uh, global city ng Port Bonifacio, sa Ortigas, yung major employment centers. Yung mga empleyado doon, they cannot afford housing. The housing is stuck. Kaya they spend four to six hours a day commuting to back and forth from home to work. So you compute that if you have 40 years of your economic life, siguro you might have lost 10 hours of your waking hours just commuting. Kaya nasabi ko nun, yung mga employees na Metro Manila, parang they are like OFWs. Just they are away from their families four to six hours a day. Yan naman planning and land use yan. Dapat balinsyado ang jobs and housing locations. Ideally, mga plinaplano namin cities, 15-minute cities. Within 15-minute walking, biking, and public transport, everything you need should be within 15 minutes. From your place of residence, place of work, to shopping, to dining, to place of worship, place to learn, and, and so on. All the urban activities should be available within 15 minutes. Nangunguna ngayon yan yung Lady Mayor ng Paris. Kaya Paris ngayon, they're doing urban renewal, urban redevelopment, replanning. Uh, one of my professors in Harvard used to tell us na, na this century will be a re-century. Re-imagine, rethink, redesign, redevelop, re-architecture, re-engineer, renew. Uh, hopefully, we'll have an urban renaissance. Kasi marami ng obsolete practices. Like 1973, after the OPEC oil crisis, pinagbawal na ang gated communities within the cities. Singapore, walang gated communities. In Boston, walang gated communities. In New York, walang gated communities. In Europe, walang gated communities. Pero lang yung mga, mga, mga residents ng mga royalties. Wala. Sir, sa tindi ng problema natin ngayon sa traffic, Opo. At uh, sa, laka, sa taas ng presyo ng gasolina, mataas ang pamasahe, may mga proposal ngayon ng gobyerno at uh, paigsihin ang, ang araw ng trabaho at oras ng trabaho. Mga four-day four work week, mga halimbawa ganun, makakatulong ba ito para maibsan ang traffic yeah, sa Metro Manila? Manila. Yeah. Kasi pati sa opisina ko po, sa web offices in Makati, Cebu, and Davao, pinapayangan ko na na at least four days a week, nasa opisina, but the, uh, the rest of the week, working from home. Kaya bumili na kami maraming computers, laptops, and iPads para sa empleyado. Para connected pa rin kami. Uh, Sir, nabanggit mo kangina na yung tungkol sa Singapore. Ang Singapore, alam naman natin na may isa sa pinaka-efficient na transport system. Ang nagawa ba ng Singapore, kaya natin ipatupad dito sa Pilipinas? Yung pong proposal namin in 1975, including the congestion charging. Kasi nauna sa atin ng Singapore, 1974 yata, yung congestion charging. Every year you enter the Central Business District of Singapore, you pay. Libre, initially, lib, uh, walang payment pag pag uh, full passengers yung kotse, yung sasakyan. Pero eventually, may charging na lahat. Yung Curitiba, Brazil, I think 1974-1975 naman, yung ano, yung bus rapid transit. So, nag-ano rin kami na sa Metro Manila. But in Singapore, number one, bawal ang gated communities. And, and, nagkaroon na ng 1974-75, may congestion charging na. Pag pumapasok ka sa congested area, you pay. You pay parang may toll fee sa Singapore. Then 1975, pre-repose natin yan sa Metro Manila. 
yung mga congested streets, may congestion charging. And then, I think we call it that time cordon pricing. You cordon off, identify mo saan yung congested uh, streets. And even proposal namin nun, maski during peak hours na, para yung mga unnecessary trips, ipospone mo outside peak hours. And hindi rin na-implement dito. And then, isa pa sa Singapore, bawal ang gated communities. Kasi one of the causes of traffic along EDSA are the gated communities and gated military camps. Yeah. Wala akong gusto magsalita niyan kasi most of our decision makers nakatira sa, sa gated communities. EDSA is functioning like eight parallel roads. Kasi EDSA is a major artillery road, minor artillery road, major collector road, minor collector road, residential access road, military access roads, shopping center access roads, schools roads, etc. So saan yung parallel roads ng EDSA? nas inside gated communities and gated military camps. Kaya it needs a strong political will to open up the subdiv the gated communities. And, so, and, yari, but hindi 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 nasunod yung proposal niyo nung 1970s tungkol sa malawakang urban planning development yeah, ng Metro Manila. Manila. Yeah, kasi wala akong continuity eh. Pag may bagong administrasyon na kina-cancel out yung previous uh, Proposal, including dredging ng Laguna Lake at saka pa rin yung Spillway. 1974 pa yan. And re-revive ni President Gloria nung sinabi ko sa kanya after Ondoy. Kaya lang, succeeding recommendation, kinansel yung kontrata with the Belgian contractors. Wala akong continuity. Kasi maybe siguro the new constitution, hindi ba, naging three years na lang ang election and six years. Kaya nagiging ang planning na hindi na long-term and visionary, naging ano lang, short-term and opportunistic. Sir, sa, sa mga proposal mo noon, sabi mo yung dredging ng Laguna, Laguna de Bay, maaari bang ikwento mo sa amin kung anong yeah. nangyari? Hindi lang ako, ako nag-propose niyan, Americans, Europeans, and so on, Japanese. Kasi yung Laguna Lake, ano yan, parang catchment area. I think 22 rivers drain into Laguna Lake. And nakapropose in the 70s, which we confirmed in the Metro Manila when I was team leader, yung Manggahan Floodway and Paranaque Spillway dapat sabay. Kasi Manggahan Floodway, it protected Metro Manila floodwaters from the mountains towards Laguna Lake. Hindi naman ginawa yung Paranaque Spillway. spillway. Kaya nasabi ko after Ondoy, Laguna Lake is like a toilet without a flush. Or it's like a bathtub with 23 faucets, walang drain. Hindi makalabas ang tubig. Kasi in Undoy, if I remember it right, 4,000 cubic meters per second ang bumagsak na floodwaters from the mountains of Antipolo, Sierra Madre, kasi nakalbo na rin ang kabundukan. Ang capacity ng Pasig River, 600 cubic meters per second lang. So saan pumunta yung 4,000 cubic meters per second ng floodwaters? It flooded 80,000 hectares of urban land in Metro Manila, especially Marikina Valley, and the lake shores of Laguna Lake. You know what's 80,000 hectares of urban land? Mas malaki pa kaysa Singapore. Singapore, 71,000 hectares of urban land lang. In fact, Singapore, kasha inside Laguna Lake. So, flooding is also a cause of traffic. Disasters, also a cause of traffic. Marami, pati yung mga... Aglification of our cities with overhead wires. Sa Dubai, na propose ko 1977, all utilities must be underground. Renewing ko pa. And rulers of Dubai, inimpose nila yan. Kaya, ang nasasabi ko rin, in, in, in my, even my term papers, na ano, is, yung mga more successful, progressive, more successful cities and countries as in the world, they have visionary leadership. Leaders with vision. Then, strong political will. And then, good appreciation of good urban planning, good appreciation of good design like architecture, engineering, and excellent management. I think Dubai is like that. The rulers of Dubai, leaders of Dubai, at saka Singapore. We were ahead. Nung pupunta, I reported to work in Dubai April 1977, nung natapos na kontrata ko sa Metro Plan Manila. Uh, Manila International Airport was probably 50 years ahead of Dubai Airport. 
Ngayon, Dubai Airport's probably 100 years ahead of Naiya. Over a short period of time, one generation lang. Kasi, Dubai meron, they implement them. Nung nagpaplano kami sa Dubai, yung uh, immediate action program, every two weeks, anong pwedeng gawin? Then, short-term program, maybe three to five years, uh, short-term planning, medium-term planning, and long-term, and visionary. Yung rule ng Dubai, may vision siya. Like, in 50 years, if I, the whole United Arab Emirates should be a first world country. Nagawa nila yan. Dubai City, the city of Dubai from the desert now, should be a first world country in 15 years. Instruction sa amin, design Dubai as if there's no oil, maubusan ng oil. Uh, design Dubai to be a garden city out of the desert. Ini-import pa garden soil, flowers, and so on, irrigation. And make Dubai a pace setter city, a leading city in the Middle East, North Africa, eventually the whole world. Sir, balik lang and, tayo sa mga sasakyan, ano, sa dami okay. sasakyan sa Metro Manila. Sa tingin nyo ba, sir, kung dagdagan natin ang buwis ng mga sasakyan, mababawasan ba ang bilang ng mga pribadong uh, sasakyan sa kalsada? At uh, dapat ba nating dapat ba meron tong batas na nagbabawal ng pagkakaroon ng sasakyan na walang garahe at saka uh, limitahan ang isa sa sasakyan ang bawat pamilya. Tungin nyo ba makakatulong nito? Yeah. Mixed feelings po ako dyan. Kasi may principle din na the polluter must pay. Mga lumang sasakyan, mas malaki ang pollution. Mga bagong sasakyan, less ang pollution. Kaya mixed feelings ako dyan. And because of the inefficiency, incompetence, uh, very dirty, hindi convenient na public transport, I think Filipinos want to have a car. And hindi makahabol ang, ang road construction natin. So, so I think solution yan, hindi lang sa Metro Manila. May mga published articles na rin ako. By 2050, with 150 million more, 150 million Filipinos, we will need, need at least 100 new cities. Otherwise, the existing cities now will be as bad if not worse than Metro Manila. Kaya kailangan nila ng long-term planning. May sinusulat ako ngayon, Philippines 2050. Okay. And if we address all our challenges, we should be in the top 20 economies of the world. Forecast na rin yan ng, I think, HSBC and Goldman Sachs. But we have to address our okay. our challenges. And naniniwala ko, and then by 2040, yan yung, I think yan yung ambition 2040 na put forward in 2015, tinuloy ng previous administration, I think we can be a first world country by 2040. And before the end of uh, 2028, we should be a middle income country. Kaya sabi ko nga, whoever will be the president, we will ne we'll never have a perfect president. Tulungan na lang natin to be a good president, the next five presidents. So kapag pinalawak natin ang kalsada, sir, mababawasan ba natin ang traffic congestion? Alin po? Pag pinalawak na natin ang mga kalsada, palalawakin natin halimbawa, lahat ng mga hindi, kalsada sa Metro Manila, mababawasan ba natin ang traffic congestion? Hindi rin ho yan ang solusyon. Kasi laparan mo ang kalsada, lalong dadami yung kotse. Dapat nga la laparan sidewalks, bicycle lanes, and even motorbikes, and more dedicated bus lanes. So, so, yun, 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 yun. And more parallel roads kaysa laparan mo isang kalsada. Like, Nung bata ko, Harvey 54, EDSA ngayon, meron island of trees by sidewalk, may tree planting. Yan ang kalsada lahat. Oh, kaya proposal ko na nga sa EDSA, uh, um, elevated walkway and bicycle lanes with with ano, planned bend doors along the way, na 27 kilometers, para people will walk. If there are bend doors na naka-organized, there are more eyes in the public room, you feel safe kasi may tao. Tapos the whole length of Pasig River, River Walk, 27 kilometers long also. Then the, peri the perimeter of uh, Laguna Lakefront, walkable, bikeable. And then the 190 kilometers of Manila Bay, walkable, bikeable with public transit. Ang tagal na hong proposal yan. Similar proposals ko na implement na elsewhere in the world. Sa tingin nyo, sir, halimbawa, uh, 
magbubukas ang lahat ng mga subdivision, isa pa yata ito sa problema eh, para ma-address yung kakulangan ng kalsada sa ngayon. Malaking tulong po dyan, kasi after 1973 oil crisis, yung mga gated communities sa Los Angeles, binuksan nila. And of course, nakalagay doon pagpasok mo, a camera is watching you. And maski during peak hours lang sana, not, not 24 hours, maybe peak hours lang during the, the, the week, it would be a very good contribution from the, the, the wealthy subdivision to the common Filipino. And guilty rin po ako kasi dati ako nakatira sa dalawang gated communities. Uh -huh. And nagpa-plano rin ako gated communities pero outside, outside, in the suburban areas. Kasi really require ng ano, kliyente. And by the way, yung mga walls, high walls, again, studies namin sa Harvard Graduate School of Design, they are not that secure. Surveys done in around Miami in Florida, the gated communities have more heinous crimes. And nangyari yan sa Malawi, the high walls, hindi na, hindi na notice, hindi na pansin, inside those high walls are armories and shabu factories. Siguro, Kaya, sir, kasabay nito, kailangan din natin na mapabuti natin ang monitoring and traffic situation sa Metro Manila. Opo, dapat po. And, and ano eh, to address traffic talaga, there are, we need good planning, good design, engineering, education, and enforcement. Good planning, good design, uh -huh. engineering, education, engineering, and enforcement. Or engineering, education enforcement. Kaya rin nawawalan disiplina kasi ano na eh, stressful eh. Oh, at saka mga streets natin, they are not pleasant. It's no better than a sewerage lines. Just connecting point A and B. Elsewhere in the world, you have a very nice experience along the road. Like kami nagplano ng Rockwell. Rockwell Drive. It's so pleasant. Kasi my trees, my landscaping, my road markings, and so on. Ano bang, most of our roads in Metro Manila are level of service F, parang failing grade. Ang level of service A, B, C, which many people don't like, are the skyways. And dati against ako sa mga skyways and skywalks, elevated walkways, until nakita ko yung catastrophic, catastrophic flooding ng Ondoy, Yolanda, Super Typhoon Katrina in New Orleans, Super Typhoon Cyclone Wilma in Florida. Sir, sir, ang Metro Manila, alam naman natin na sentro ito ng kalakalan at uh, edukasyon. Sa tingin nyo ba, uh, mas mapapaganda ang traffic sa Metro Manila kung mailipat natin sa mga lalawigan ang mga establishment, halimbawa, government center, Opo. at uh, mga factory, mga pagawaan. 1970s proposal po yan. Kasi na-involved din ako as project officer ng National Physical Framework Plan ng buong Pilipinas, funded by the United Nations Development Program. And in fact, nakapag-presenta ako ng 2006 in New York, interconnecting the whole Philippine Islands with bridges, railways, subways. And in fact, kung 2006, kung sa akin yung, yung gumawa ng faster train in the world, maglev and Germany, sinabi sa akin, Lawak and Dava will be less than three hours by train. Okay. Sir, isa sa mga uh, pinagtutuunan ng pansin ngayon para mabawasan yung traffic sa Metro Manila ay itong pag-pace uh, out sa ating mga, mga jeepneys. Ano? Alam naman natin na talagang mga luma na mga ito at kailangan ng pagbabago. Makakatulong ba to sir? Opo, makakatulong po yan. Kasi one is uh, polluting na sila. You know, the concept of Disney is very good concept. Kasi mas frequent closer to your destination. But the jeepneys now, World War II, post-war pa yan eh, di ba, na, na unique in the Philippines na yung mga arm, army jeep, US army jeep, kinonvert na jeepney. Kaya lang they are highly polluting and I think they are not even that safe anymore. Kaya kinoconvert into cooperatives yan. Ang ginagawa na ito sa Davao yan eh, jeepney drivers, maging member ng cooperative ng buses and so on. And we should have a hierarchy of roads, like na, na sabi ko kanina, major artery, major collector, access road, and so on. We should also have a hierarchy of transportation. 
So the smaller capacity vehicles would feed into the higher capacity vehicles. Let's say the equivalent of a jeepney or share ride into the buses, the buses into the railways, the railways into the subways, into the airports, into the water transport. Ang ano ko nga host dun sa assignment ko sa Philippine Development Plan na na kaya sa akin, Asian Development Bank to help the Philippine government is seamless connectivity. And I, I mentioned in my recommendation, there are 32 modes of transportation. And okay. the car should be the last priority. Sir, kasabay ng pagbabagong ito, uh, siguro kailangan din ang tulong ng mamamayan dahil hindi kaya lahat na ito Kung pagbabago lang, kailangan siguro may pagbabago din sa mga commuter, sa mga driver. Opo, lahat, lahat po tayo. Kasi even uh, urban developments all over the world, 80% is private sector. 20% lang ang government. Siguro mas mataas pa ang private sector sa bayan natin. Like maraming private roads. Kaya sinasara nila. And then most of the buildings are privately owned. Some infrastructure is privately built, like you know, skyways, those are private sector led yan. Approvals lang ang government. And, ano yan, dapat, aside from strongly visionary leadership, with strong political will, you should also have good citizenship. Tama, ma. Sa tingin nyo ba, sir, may pag-asa pang malutas ang ating problema sa trapiko sa mga pangyayari ngayon o sa may, susunod ng mga taon? Uh, Hindi lang ho dapat, ano nga, from urban planning, urban design, transportation planning, traffic engineering, traffic management, and include there education, enforcement, and good citizenship. Kung kayong tatanungin, sir, gaano katagal may papatupad ito kung sabihin sa yung lutasin natin ito? Kung Dubai, siguro five years lang. Philippines, we are very slow to reform. Very slow. Kaya nga po, Every time my crisis, I go back to school. Eight times na ako naging estudyante ng Harvard Graduate School of Design. And every time my crisis, bumabalik ako doon. Although nakapag-lecturer ako doon bago ako naging estudyante. And I keep on learning. Kaya mga international organizations like American Stroop Architects, Planning, U.S. Building Council. I think I, I belong to more about 10 international organizations. May mga seminars twice a year, four times a year. Kaya pari, para pa rin ako estudyante, keep on learning. Kaya lang mga learnings natin, pag sinishare dito, it's very challenging. Hindi... Maraming hindi salamat, sir. Mr. Palapos. Oo, hindi na-implement po. Oho. Uh, sa'yo ang floor para sa yung huling pananalita. Yeah. I, I think we have a good future for our country. And... Hindi lang sa traffic. If, if I may share, if there's enough time, if you rotate the map of the world, the Philippines is right in the center. It's no wonder for more than 300 years, we are the Asia-Pacific hub of Spanish Europe. 50 years, the Americans. Two years, the British. Four years, the Japanese. Kaya given na, because of our strategic location, superpower countries will always be interested in our islands. When we're number one in the world in marine biodiversity. We're now number one in sailors, seamen. We're now number one in call centers. I like to believe we are number one in nurses. We're number two in the world in geothermal energy. Number two now in BPOs. I think we have the third or fifth longest coastlines in the world. When we're planning Dubai, 70 kilometers of natural waterfront. So they excavated the desert to have more waterfront and created the man-made islands, palm islands. We are number four in the world now in shipbuilding. Thanks to the Koreans and the Japanese. We're also number four in gold, number five in all mineral resources, and number 12 in human resources. So I feel we should be in the top 12, or at least top 20 economies of the world. We are 400 times the size of Singapore, 350 times the size of Hong Kong, eight times the size of Taiwan, and three times the size of the size of South Korea. So if we work together, like starting with the Philippine Development Plan. 2023 to 2028, and I'm trying to help create a vision plan for the Philippines 2050, hoping that the Philippines will be in the top 20 economies in the world by 2050. First world country by 2040, we would have addressed climate change, criminality, corruption, infrastructure inequality by 2030. 
And before 2028, with the Philippine Development Plan 2020-28, we should be a middle-income economy by then. So I have so much hope in our country. I had opportunities to change my passport, but I never. It was never in my in my dream to change my passport. And our country is so blessed. Ay napakaganda naging paliwanag ni Architect Palapok sa ating usapan tungkol sa problema natin sa trapiko. Uh, bagamat sinabi niya na 70s pa lamang ay nagkaroon na siya ng proposal. Sana magkaroon tayo ng political will sa panahon ito para may sulong natin ang reforma sa trapiko. Dito na po nagtatapos ang aming talakayan sa mga mainit na isyong nakakaapekto sa mga serbisyong pampubliko na nakakaapekto sa mga institusyon at ahensya ng gobyerno. Para sa pagbabago, tungo sa pagunlad, isulong natin ang reforma sa gobyerno. Maraming salamat po at magandang araw sa inyong lahat.